Scanning tunneling microscopy is a very well-known technique that is used to image the surfaces of many materials. In this microscopy technique, a sharp tip is placed at some distance away from the sample to be measured. The application of a voltage bias on the junction between the tip and the sample induces some electron tunneling to occur, which completes the circuit. It is by measuring this tunneling current as a function of position of the tip that images of the surface can be produced. Despite the fact that this technique does achieve very good spatial resolution, it unfortunately does not provide very much temporal resolution, which would be useful in certain applications. For instance, in many materials it is possible to induce quantum phenomena which occur over some period of time. Such quantum processes can induce tunneling currents inside of our system, which will also correspondingly evolve as a function of time. As a simple example, let's just say that the sample that we're studying contains two quantum states, the ground state labeled A and an excited state labeled B. Let's also assume that the system is initially in the ground state. Through some external stimuli, it is possible to excite the system from the ground state into the higher energy state at which point the system will remain in the higher energy state for some period of time before relaxing back down into the ground state. In many cases, the relevant time scale for such processes to occur is typically on the time scale of picoseconds. Unfortunately, the very slow response times of the STM electronics makes it unfeasible to measure such signals due to the Nyquist limit. Pump probe STM is a technique that was developed very recently to address this problem. This new method does still feature an STM operating as usual. However, temporal resolution is acquired by making use of another well-known technique, which goes by the name of pump probe spectroscopy. This method utilizes two very short pulses of light that are incident on the same area of the sample that is being probed by the STM tip. Ultrafast lasers are one of the main tools used in pump probe spectroscopy. Instead of shooting out a steady stream of light, these lasers actually emit pulses of light. The repetition rate is one important feature of these lasers as it reveals how often a pulse is generated. Finally, it is worthwhile to note that the time duration of each pulse can be very, very short, typically on the order of femtosecond durations for these lasers. Now it is important to go over some of the fundamentals of pump probe spectroscopy. For any given sample, we would essentially need to just align two optical pulses through the same area of the sample. The first pulse is going to be known as the pump, which will throw the sample into a higher energy state. The probe pulse, which arrives after some time delay, is used to characterize the evolution of this new excited state. By measuring how the sample interacts with the probe as a function of time delay, it is easy to map out the dynamics of many quantum phenomena. The following is a schematic diagram of how a pump probe spectroscopy setup is typically designed. At the heart of every setup is an ultrafast laser which is used to generate short optical pulses. A beam splitter is used to separate an initial pulse into two separate pulses, one which will be used as the probe and the other one which will be used as the pump. As mentioned before, we would have to align both the probe and pump pulses through the same area of the sample. The relative time delay between the two pulses can be modified by adjusting the optical path length of the probe using a motorized delay stage. A photodetector is used to measure the properties of the probe. Due to the fairly slow response time of the photodetector, we typically have to perform measurements over several pairs of pump and probe pulses. This isn't usually an issue due to the repetition rates of ultrafast lasers. Many commercial systems have repetition rates of 1 kHz, and some can go up to as high as 250 kHz. Pump probe STM tries to borrow some of these principles from pump probe spectroscopy. However, this time both the pump and the probe are now incident on the position of the sample, which is also being probed by the STM tip. Both the pump and the probe pulses will induce their own corresponding tunneling currents. In this technique, we would then have to measure the difference between these two signals as a function of time delay between the two pulses. The exact specifics of how this is done are somewhat complicated. However, this measurement can be done in principle using another instrument known as a lock-in amplifier. Now you may wonder why it's important that we measure the difference between these two current signals. The reasoning for this can be motivated by simply taking a quick look at the simple quantum system that was introduced earlier. When the pump pulse hits the sample, the sample now reaches a new higher energy state. If the sample still remains in the excited state by the time the probe pulse arrives, the sample may not interact with the probe since the probe photons cannot excite any higher energy states. Hence, the tunneling currents induced by the probe are going to be negligible. 
as the probe does not interact with the system. This type of phenomenon is known as absorption bleaching. As with any other measurement technique, this method does have its own drawbacks. First of all, the photons from both the pump and the probe have enough energy to actually heat the sample. One problem this can cause is thermal expansion. In other words, the atoms of the sample will begin to expand due to the excess thermal energy. This thermal expansion can change the properties of the sample, and how to account for this isn't always straightforward. The second limitation relates to how well you can align both the pump and the probe onto your sample, which is mounted inside of an STM chamber. Both the pump and the probe pulses must overlap with each other on the sample and also have to be in contact with an area of the sample which is also being monitored by the STM tip. If the wavelengths of both the pump and the probe aren't in the visible light regime, which is required in certain situations, then this can pose a bit of a challenge. The last limitation relates to pump probe spectroscopy itself. Essentially, the sample needs to have the presence of quantum states which can be excited using light in the first place.